Hello. Yes, I really uh, value the opportunity to talk about these guidelines as I know there's a lot of interest in them, both within the membership of the faculty and externally. And there's a lot in the news generally about conscientious objection. So it feels timely to do that. Uh, the first thing I'd say is that the, actually the reason why we wanted to update them was partly because we hadn't done that for some time, but also because we brought nurses into diplomat membership of the faculty in 2013. And as a result of that, we wanted to update all of our policies to make sure they were relevant to our new members. We're very proud of the fact that we have nurses in membership um, with an equivalent qualification to doctors. But we realised with this particular guidance that um, it was time to have a bit more perhaps of a debate around the stance that we take. Because clearly in section reproductive health care that uh, touches on both abortion care and uh, can touch on fertility treatment, there are areas where conscientious objection laws already exist. So uh, we, like all good membership bodies, we set up a working group. We had um, all sorts of views from across our membership represented, from those with a conscientious objection to abortion care, to those with what they called a conscientious commitment to delivering abortion care. Um, and uh, everything else in between. So we had some fantastic discussions and really thoughtful discussions where we recognised that it wasn't helpful for the faculty just to simply take a totally black and white view on this issue. And we hope that the new guidance reflects that. So what's changed for members um, in the guidance? Uh, previously, for a diplomat, uh, we insisted that um, you prescribe all forms of contraception in order to become a diplomat, but we didn't test that or enforce that. Um, what we decided to do on discussion this time is to think about what personal beliefs might, how they might impact on patient care, not just for diplomats, but for those of you who hold letters of competence, those of you doing the membership exam, even those of you who are trainees on the specialty training programme. So we looked across all of our qualifications and training and we felt the right approach was to ask you to sign up to principles of care. And these were very carefully worded, uh, supported by our council, and they really put the focus on the healthcare professional thinking through his or her approach, um, how uh, her personal beliefs might impact on the patient, what she might need to put in place in order to ensure that there was no judgment made, of that patient, um, that their care wasn't in any way delayed. And we felt that should actually apply to all healthcare professionals, regardless of where they might feel they're on, they are on the sort of spectrum of, of um, conscientious objection uh, and conscientious commitment. Um, so we now ask anybody, any nurse or doctor who wants to do any of our qualifications to sign up to these six principles of care. And that does include being open with their employer and their colleagues about any personal beliefs that could impact on their, the patient care that they offer in order to ensure that the service can respond to that and be built around the patient's needs. So um, it also applies to um, anybody, any existing members um, who are recertifying, for example, their diploma or their letter of competence. They will also need to sign up to these six principles of care as part of their recertification. So we would encourage you, if you are recertifying, to um, have a conversation with us or with your general training programme director if you have any concerns about signing up to the principles of care or want to ask more questions. We feel very committed after two years of discussion around this to continuing that discussion with our members. Um, we understand the passion um, of, of people with particularly that perhaps those with very particular beliefs and we want to be an organisation that's able to debate those issues. But at the end of the day, we also feel it's our responsibility to put patient care first.